pumping. Pump. All right, so you got one or two choices. Either it's gonna look like nothing, and you're gonna have no idea that there's even a problem. Okay. Has anybody seen any gun show ones up close? Do they necessarily all bleed? No, no. no absolutely not. I, I would say a majority of the gunshot wounds that I've had, if you have, if you have uh, pistol rounds, a lot of times there's not even an exit wound, there's not really a lot of blood. But if this is what you have, is that because we know this, is this troubling? <laughs> yeah. If it's not bleeding externally, does that mean that it's not bleeding? No. 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 Absolutely not. If you find a pokey little hole in somebody, don't draw a smiley face around it. Take them to the hospital. Because you can be bleeding internally, and you won't necessarily have outward signs until you're in first or second stage shock. But if you have this, this is troubling. What's going to happen when I put my 87 cent dressing on this and apply direct pressure? It's going to get wet. Am I going to be able to cram enough of it down into that hole to necessarily make a difference? Maybe, maybe not. If it's, if it's a decent arterial, if I, if I clipped a, a decent sized artery, then no, probably not. Um, the cell ox A, you know, the, I mean, there's nothing to it. You don't have to screw it in. It's not like for the EMS kids. It's not like D50. You don't have to screw the plunger down into it. You just pop that end off, insert it in here. Take the end out here. Isolate the wound. Uh, cram it down until he swings on you. <laughs> and then the trick is, is as we're, as we're applying direct pressure so that we don't get kicked in the jaw, you're going to push this down and then draw the, the syringe back out and fill up as much of that. Now, what's the next stage, the next step? Right. We're going to apply as much force to the, um, to the outside of the wound as we can. So say you did have a, uh, you know, a 9mm, 40, 45 caliber exit wound, and, um, and this is bleeding pretty badly. My, my, my suggestion is that if it's feasible, is to go in from the exit wound side mm -hmm. and apply this as deep as you can. Now, depending on the, on the geometry of the wound, that's not necessarily always going to be uh, feasible. So applying copious amounts of direct pressure. Stop squirming, stop squirming. So, now I turned this off, obviously, but. So what we're gonna do, Mike, you don't mind, do you, buddy? He's oh, he's gone, you. never mind. <laughs> Dig in. Enjoy it. <laughs> Yeah, just um, right yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to splash anybody. I'm sorry. I'll be gentle-ish. I just want you guys to be able to see what what this actually did in the in the channel. So, same thing. You can see that in the down into the very bottom of the channel, that the the top of this is barely even wet. And it's it's just all the way down to the base of the base of the entrance wound. So, and then what you had what you had was essentially the the, the same configuration as from the other uh, mm. from the other the other because uh, it's the same it's the it's the same powder it's just with the applicator. The the Cellox A just means applicator. It's it's the exact same product. It's the same powder as as what we use from this. It's exactly the same. It's identical. All of the Cellox formulations are the same. It's just the package that they put them in. Um, we have two types of gauze that we're going to look at as well, the Cellox gauze. One is basically like you put Play-Doh in the top of the thing, you squirt it out, and like Play-Doh comes out the end, right? There's two kinds of Cellox gauze. One is gauze that's impregnated with Cellox particles. The other is the Play-Doh version. They put, it, they put Cellox in the top, they squish it, and Cellox in a gauze shape comes out. In a gauze shape. In a gauze shape, exactly. Oh, wow. So it's um, the white package, the Cellox trauma gauze, 
it's exactly the same as this, but in a rolled gauze form.